Yo, this is Mike, Ringmaster of the Imagination Circus. And I'm here for another Ruby reaction to Volume 6. This is Chapter 8, Dead End. And, wow, time has just uh, flown by, hasn't it? Like, we're already at Chapter 8, uh, you know, and then we got... Only six chapters left, but regardless, let's get into it, right? I, I don't got much to talk about here today, and I don't want to waste your time. I don't want to waste my time, so let's get into it. I'm so excited, so hyped, especially after last the last week. You know, the last chapter was really good. I loved it. We got to Crocodile. We got a young Maria losing her eyes. We got mm, some more Neo, and while I hate Cinder, she is entertaining, even if I do hate her gut so much. But, and then, of course... The reveal of one of the Ark sisters in her current state. We also got the others in a past state, thanks to a certain family photo. But regardless, enough recap, enough me talking about what was great about the last episode. Let's see what's great about this episode. And... Three, two, one, play. Alright, straight to the base, right where we left Our off. Orders are clear. The Mistral Atlas border is closed. Please, have a Jeez. good day. But a good day! Hey, if you don't want to believe that I'm friends with Ironwood... General Ironwood. Yeah, General Ironwood. Then oh my fine. god, these look, guys are annoying. Also, are you sure we're... Are we sure they're not Tweedledee and Tweedledum? What is with these guys' designs? They look weird. Approach! I mean, I guess, what else can they do at this point? Very well. You may speak with our commanding officer. <laughs> we will fetch her at once. They were kind of super weird. <laughs> I mean, no joke. Hmm. What's wrong? Well, I may know this commanding officer. That's okay, good, you... isn't it? Uh, if she's your friend, then maybe she'd be more willing to help us. I wouldn't exactly call us friends. Acquaintances? Not quite. Colleagues? Former. Enemies? That's the one. Wait, what? Oh, yes, I come through here about once every ten years to get my eyes checked up in Atlas. You bring outside cashews on one flight, and suddenly you're placed on the additional screening list for life! <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> now, now, let's not give up hope yet. Maybe she's dead. <laughs> that way, if only! Now I really want to beat this person. I mean, apparently... Introducing Special Operative Caroline Cordovan! Cord Cordovan? Was that it? I honestly couldn't understand with how you... Another short woman! Or another short person in general. Like, literally... They're the, literally... That is freaky. Which, She's a little bit... She, devil. Hmm. I see you've chosen larger contraband to smuggle this time. Oh, Cordo. You know, they say time changes people. But I see you've still got that stick right out... Oh! Miss, uh... Uh, Cordovan? Uh, my name is Ruby Rose, and I was wondering if you would hear us out about... I've already heard what your other little friends had to say. Miss Rose... What are you doing back here? I thought I told you to leave! Uh, and I told you we wouldn't rest until you last time! Nice to see you again as well. You civilians are clearly incapable of comprehending the importance of our mission here in Argus. So allow me to say this slowly with smaller words. This base, that relay tower, the very safety of Argus are all gifts from the glorious kingdom of Atlas. And it is my duty to uphold them, as only I have the wit and tenacity for such a task. Such wit! Such tenacity! Or maybe Atlas just wanted to get you as far I as I really the don't possible. like her. You're just like the rest of these Argus ingrates. This city wouldn't even be here if it weren't for our Elysian ancestors. And what do we get in return? The entire world is ready to put a knife to our throats. Please. We know your kingdom had nothing to do with the fall of Beacon. We were there. No one's happy about the Atlas borders or embargo. But I know General Ironwood is just worried. It's why we need to talk the to... The General is no coward. Atlas is strong. If all the kingdoms plan to make us their enemy, then so be it. 
Atlas will prevail! Atlas will prevail! Do you guys seriously have to do that? If Mishni has truly come to her senses and wishes to return to her family, then of course the Atlas military will escort her home. But the kingdom will not be responsible for her friends of questionable character. What's that supposed to mean? It means we're done here. Oh, I really don't like her. Oh yeah? Well, your face looks like a big dumb boot. Way to show her, Nora. <laughs> Seriously, why is why I, I gotta ask, why is Sean not more don't sarcastic? Advice. I told you we wouldn't leave your side for a second. We'll find a way to Atlas. Together. Good. Good. A nice. Ah, uh, crow! So, where are we going now? Yeah, what's the plan? The plan? The plan just got shut on our face three times over. I'm going for a drink. <sighs> Apparently, the I near really think we should try death in the, in the farm did not teach him a damn Together. thing. Crow! What's his problem? It's not your fault we can't go on. If he's gonna be a jerk, then we'll just come up with something without him. I mean, we've got Ozpin with us. He usually knows what to do. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. What is it? Uh, yeah, there's... <gasps> oh. Sean! Everything we did was for nothing! That's not true. Really? Because it sure does sound like it. I am... If Salem can't be killed, then how are we supposed to win this? Wow. Great plan, everyone. Look, none of this is great, we know. But we're not the bad guys here. Are we sure about that? What? Uh, He's in your head, isn't he? Did you already know about this? He didn't know any of it! <laughs> How much longer can we even trust him? John! How do we even know it's really him? What if we've been talking to that liar this whole time? John! Well, that gets that scene out of the way, so that's pretty much the whole intro. <sighs> well, is that's just depressing. Okay, but I guess the I, I guess that means last episode was kind of a breather after after everything that happened. I think it would be best if we had some uh, time to ourselves. Well, crud. Maybe we could all use some space. Seriously. Ozpin. Come on, please. Who are you calling? Oh, of course. Well, where are you? Okay. You no, know, I came out here to avoid the yelling. Sorry. It's a very pretty garden. I'll get... To get food for tonight. Oh, I Especially don't since. Them. I don't know. I don't know anything. What do I tell Jean and his team when we don't even have a plan? The crow's out drinking. The husband hasn't come back. And even if he did, I don't know if I could trust him. And there's always Jin, but we only have one more question we can ask her. Yep. I feel like I'm letting everyone down. You know, you don't give yourself enough credit. Oh, thanks. That wasn't a compliment. Uh, what? If I have to explain it to you, it'll just defeat the purpose. But if you're tired of not knowing anything, how about we discuss those eyes of yours? Oh, all right then. Oh, uh, yes, ma'am. That would, would be, be really honored. great, actually. Sit back down for Pete's sake. Let's start with what you do know. Tell me. Uh, silver-eyed people are supposed to be legendary warriors. Or something. <laughs> and at the fall of Beacon, I turned a giant wyvern into stone. She actually oh. said it! She got the fact that it's a wyvern! But, uh, if I already knew everything, I wouldn't be <laughs> She actually said the word Yelling. wyvern! I'm sorry! 
That's been bugging me for years! It's not your fault. I had my father to teach me. And even he didn't have all the answers. But what he told uh. me makes sense, given what I've seen. Was he a huntsman too? It wasn't really an official title back in his day. I only knew him as an old soldier and an excellent teacher. I never attended one of those fancy academies of yours, but I scored higher on the license exam than any other huntsman or huntress that day. Huh. You must have been proud. <laughs> he would have scolded me for showing off. He'd never been able to find much information about our abilities. Just legends of warriors whose eyes shone like mirrors, reflecting the light of the world onto darkness. He found so little, in fact, that it made him cautious. How could such powerful bloodlines be so rare? Unless something was actively seeking to destroy them. Salem. I tried to keep my powers a secret, but as you know, it wasn't enough. I owe my life to my training and my semblance. At the end of the day, those are still your most powerful tools. What is your semblance? <laughs> Reflexes! A silly name I came up with. Hard to explain, but I can sense everything better than most and react to attacks almost before they happen. Combine that with my training and secret ability to turn Grim to stone, oh. or blind them, or vaporize them. <clears throat> and that's how you become the Grim Reaper. So, how do I laser beam monsters with my eyeballs? <clears throat> First, you stop thinking <laughs> like that. Nice. I want you to think nice. of all the times you've triggered your powers. What did those moments have in common? I w was scared and stressed. Is it emotional? Like unlocking a semblance? It's emotional, but more focused than that. Think. What is mm. it you wanted? I wanted to protect my friends. Precisely. It is the desire to preserve life which fuels the light inside you. And make no mistake, it is light. Preservation is an extension of creation, or, at the very least, an enemy of destruction. The creatures of Grimm were made by the God of Darkness, but your light comes from his brother. How do you know that? I always knew how to use the light, but never why it only worked on the Grimm. Then Jin showed us her vision. Were you paying attention? Oh, now that the god of light. Oh, very interesting. His eyes. <laughs> okay, where do we start? His very, his very well, being, even. Not here. That is. The light will only work in the presence of Grim, meaning the only practice you'll get will be a trial by fire. But what you can do is focus on creating a state of mind that you can tap into when you need it. Don't think about your light as a means of destroying evil, but as a way to protect the people of Remnant. But uh, that can't be right. Hmm? You said the light only reacts to Grim, <laughs> but I used it during our battle at Haven. It reacted to Cinder. Interesting. Perhaps there was something that you just weren't seeing? Ruby! Oh, hey, guys. What's going on? It's Oscar. He's missing. Oh, crud. And let me guess, that's where it ends? Yes, of course it is. Oh, man. All right, so this episode, this chapter, mm, a lot of things. We got okay. Once again, they're 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 putting a lot of information in these in these very short chapters. We're getting a lot out of them. Here, we learn that yeah, the they're not going to help get any help from this particular Atlas base to get back to Atlas. 
annoyingly. Like, seriously, if they could somehow just get a word to Ironwood, that would be really helpful. I kind of, like, maybe if that letter got to him somehow, that would be great. Or, eh, there are a couple of other things, like, you know, like, we learn more about the Silver Eyes, finally. And, of course, so little information. Powerful bloodlines being utterly destroyed. And, yeah, Salem. And apparently, that does raise a bit of a question. Like, she froze a wyvern, which, again, I'm really happy that she just referred to it as a wyvern. I know it, that's very nitpicky, but wyvern is a type of dragon. It is not specifically, like, a full dragon. A wyvern only has the wings and a single pair of back legs. And I know it's very specific, but it's always bothered me that the in for the con with the concept concept art of Kevin, aka the Grim Dragon, as it is described, he's written as Grim Dragon. He's not referred to as a wyvern. The fact that whoever wrote this script specifically wrote him to be a wyvern made me really, really happy. It's such a minute detail, I know, but stuff like I, I can't help it. I get nitpicky deep down, and that has bothered me for years. And no, it's it's a dumb thing. Regardless, I like this. I like that Jean's reaction. Jeez, he left. He like put a pretty decent dent in the wall of what I'm pretty sure is his sister's house. Dude, I get it. you're angry, and hell, the whole of Juniper's pretty upset. So yeah, fair enough. Uh, but you know what? It's like maybe don't destroy your sister's wall. I understand you're angry, but calm down. Also, that more or less covers a majority of what we get in the scene, or rather the intro. We Everything we get in the intro has been more or less covered, at least the literal stuff, as it were. And as for the stuff that's a little bit more metaphorical, well, we learn more about Silver Eyes thanks to Maria, as we all more or less expected, then sure. And as for, uh, like, like, Crow seems to be going down a spiral that's getting worse and worse, and I don't know, he's gonna need a huge wake-up call. I thought maybe the farm would be that, but I guess that wasn't it. You know, he seemed kind of okay, but I guess this didn't help in his, like, you know, knee-jerk reaction is go get a drink! It's just really irritating. Regardless, I liked this episode. I didn't like it as much as the last two, but then this one just kind of frustrated me a bit. It's great setup, and like I said, I during the reaction, I feel like this, the last week's chapter was pretty much a breather before we got to the really heavy stuff, and now we've got Oscar on the run. The big thing to take away from this, outside of the all the reveal of all the important details concerning the Silver Eyes, like, those are some very important details concerning the Silver Eyes, and I really find it interesting that they are only supposed to work not only on the Grim, but in the presence of Grim, and that the light specifically came from the God of Light. That's interesting, to say the least. It does bring up some serious questions about why people have Silver Eyes to begin with, but okay maybe we'll figure that out, maybe it's not important, who knows. So, but I just, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, it, but it does it bring up a question, if, okay, so the light only works in the presence of Grimm. Fair enough, she was in the presence of Kevin when she first activated them after the unfortunate death of Pyrrha. However, does that mean that as long as a Grimm is present for her to use the light on, does that mean that she can, by extension, use it on people? Because that really does kind of bring up the question about everything that happened with her basically beating down, like, uh, beating <laughs> down um, Cinder. That, I don't know. I don't know if that's a contradiction or if I'm overthinking it. But something about that doesn't make sense, and uh, maybe it's just me, but whatever. I'm I'm very I'm a little confused, and very curious about that. Regardless, this was a really really enjoyable chapter. I mostly want to talk. Uh, the the last thing I really want to focus on is, of course, the fact that now Oscar's gone, and that makes sense. After everything, he's clearly felt like an an outsider this whole time, with a destiny that has been forced upon him. 
and he doesn't feel comfortable. His like he's got this huge weight on his shoulders as the new host for Ozpin. That shit that Crow said to him before after everything that happened seeing the vision. I'm just going to be another one of his lives, aren't I? Of course not. You're your own person. Don't lie to him, Ruby. We're better than that. And then them traveling to Brunswick's. Yeah, thanks a lot, Crow. That didn't help anything, you stupid jerk. Him taking his rage, his frustration out on the world and everybody around him, you know, maybe the reason he can't control his semblance is because he's too, he's focusing on the negative. Maybe if he wasn't being such an ass, maybe he'd have a better chance of doing so. Maybe, and that's just conjecture, but damn it, I can't deal with his stupidity. Really, really frustrates me. And I'm supposed to be talking about Oscar. God. Okay, look. So, and like, so the point I'm trying to make is that Oscar has had to deal with a lot. He feels like an outsider. He's been put down. He, unfortunately, the fact that he has no choice but to carry Ozpin in his head. Hell, because of Ozpin, he is the only reason he's here in the first place. He refused the call. Ironically, he fits the hero's journey better than pretty much every other character in this story. Granted, the hero's journey is not a tight knit writing tool as it real that's all it really is but uh, or a writing guide even but the point is yeah he refused the call but you know what he accepted he wanted more he went out he listened to the voice in his head and he got involved and he learned some things but unfortunately Ozpin turned out to not be entirely trustworthy and again I like Ozpin I feel sorry for him, but I will agree that he made some very stupid moves along the way, mostly in not trusting his allies as well as he could have, even if he did have his reasons for doing so. So the fact that, like, the point I've been trying to make, even though I keep going on tangents, is the fact that Oscar running away after this, after this being the final straw, Jean getting pissed at him, Jean accusing him of not being who he says he is, of essentially emphasizing his being the, the outsider he might be. Yeah, no wonder this happened. No wonder he decided to run away. Really, and honestly, and, I, and outside of that fact, this just emphasizes something else I've been suspecting since the beginning of the volume. It took us an entire volume just to get to Haven after leaving at the end of Volume 3. It took us the entirety of Volume 4 to get to Mistral and Haven. Now, it only took us about half a volume to get to Argus, but Argus is not the final destination. Atlas is. And the fact of the matter is, it's, I don't think we're gonna, if we're gonna make, we might make it to Atlas by the end of the volume. If so, I will be very impressed. But obviously, we're not gonna get there in any meaningful way. The part where we try and secure the relic in Atlas it's not going to happen this volume. At least I don't think it is. And the fact that they now have to go out and look for Oscar, yeah, eh, that's more or less uh, how things are going to go. And that makes me wonder, when is Ozpin going to reemerge? Is this going to be what it takes? I mean, is he going to have to, what, save Oscar's life? I honestly don't know. The whole thing is kind of insane. And it frustrates me, but it in, it makes me, and I'm, but I'm only this frustrated because I'm so invested. Because that's how good the show is, and I'm dry. It's driving me crazy, and now I can't wait. Ah, but um, yeah, I feel like I've made my point. I've I've presented my point as well as I possibly can. All of my points, all of my thoughts. And yeah, I thought this was a good episode, not as good as some of the others this volume, but yeah, it really is kind of a transition episode showing us that we're going to have problems getting to Atlas, that, you know, uh, that they've got to look for Oscar, that, you know, Juniper now has to deal with it. And yeah, it makes sense that this is their reaction, because it's not that different from how Team Ruby reacted, and now Juniper has to deal with it too. Unfortunately, they have to catch up. And, uh, yeah, it shows that things will just never be easy. And, it, honestly, if we, it wouldn't really be a very good story if it was. So, yeah, this is Mike, Ringmaster of the Imagination Circus. This was a pretty good episode. I cannot wait. Thank you. And if you feel so inclined, please come back for more.